have a look now at consistency levels as they relate to Cassandra. So as we've said so far, data are likely to vary depending on the consistency levels defined when writing and or reading. So consistency levels. And it's important theory that pertains to how your data will be writ written or read accordingly. And there are a number of features. Again, it's largely theoretical, but we'll look at some practical examples shortly after the various dry theory associated with it. But insofar as Cassandra is concerned, it's a balance that we're trying to strike between the accuracy of the results of the data sets returned to you by, let's say for reads, by your client, let's say it's SQL Shell, versus the performance associated with brokering network I.O. connections. So one feature is that consistency, consistency levels help us to improve or they improve accuracy of the data set information. as you set higher consistency level values or requirements. And one simple example of that is level set to, let's say, all for reads or writes. When set to all, that means all nodes that participate with a given key space within its replication factor will have to agree to writes and reads if set for both writes and reads. So applies to reads, writes alike. From the programmatic point of view, you'll use a driver for PHP, Python, Ruby, etc. to set the consistency level requirements. And perhaps you'll use the same level for both reads and writes, such as quorum, which is a good mid-ground, which we'll discuss momentarily. But if you use all, because you have to have, let's say, a high level of accuracy, then you're more likely to experience inavailability of, or unavailability of your data, but with a guarantee that if all nodes are up that participate in a replication factor for your key space, that your data will be written and read perfectly across all those nodes. So all is a value that you should be mindful of because again, it requires, let's just note that as well, that you should be mindful of using, let's say, or setting level equal to all because it requires all nodes in the cluster that match your key spaces replication factor to be available. And that's at time of, let's say, read and or write. Let's say from the perspective of SQL Shell where you set it once using consistency and it applies to both reads and writes or via a driver for a scripting language where you can determine on reads or writes. So all is an extreme level. But again, we're trying to strike a balance between accuracy and availability. So we get improved accuracy when we use the highest level, the extreme all. We get improved performance or we cause Cassandra to perform better with lower consistency level requirements. And an example of this would be, of course, level equals any. That means any node in the cluster who responds and takes responsibility for a given key space for reads and writes. But of course, we should be mindful of this one as well because it produces the highest availability and the lowest accuracy. So yields highest availability and lowest accuracy. So the question is, what is the balance between the two? So of course we have this notion of tunable consistency levels. And that applies of course to reads and writes and these are performed or set as we've already alluded to by clients. So it's basically the client's job to determine and let's just note IE, Ruby, PHP, etc., Python, or even SQL shell. And that's SQL shell included with 
Cassandra. So these tunable levels, well, we have this notion of quorum. And quorum provides us, which you'll see with respect to not only Cassandra, but with clustering in general. But in the case of Cassandra, it provides us with a mid-ground of both availability and accuracy. So it's in between, so it's usually the safe bet. There is a mathematical definition, a simple one rather, for quorum storage for reads for writes. And that is that it's equal to basically the replication factor, plus a little more of course, divided by two plus one. Using PEMDAS, this can be all lumped together. And the results are rounded down to the nearest whole number. So, a simple example, let's say, of quorum in the case of a replication factor. So, i.e., if your rep factor happens to be 2, then quorum will simply be 2 divided by 2 plus 1. That's two, rounded down to the nearest whole number is two. So in the case of a rep factor equals two, you'll need two nodes to operate with reads and or writes at a quorum level. And this is why you'll often see with Cassandra documentation the specification of a rep factor of three because this gives us one level beneath the replication factor. So, i.e., we bump the rep factor, let's say, up to three, and obviously the quorum now has a little room in between because it's 3 divided by 2 plus 1 and then rounded of course so that's 1.5 plus 1 2.5 rounded down equals 2 so in the case of a rep factor 3 your quorum is 2 which means you can survive one failure so survives one failure and again this is for reads or writes, depending on what's specified. Depending on the nature of your application, Cassandra provides us that level of consistency. So let's just also note that again. Cassandra's reads and writes can be tuned independently. And let's just note at the driver level. So of course, from the perspective of the calling client language, such as Ruby, Python, PHP or plugins for other environments, Perl, etc. At that point, perhaps you write with the quorum and read with one just to get your quick reads back because the data do not change rapidly. And let's just note that data mutations will dictate the levels of consistency. So just to elaborate a little bit more, i.e., if data change infrequently, let's say very infrequently, and one example of that would be, for example, perhaps let's open a browser and show that example. So let's navigate to our website, linuxcbt.com. Because again, a lot of it's dry hypothetical data, and even trying to articulate it can be quite dry and boring. So take, for example, from one of our syllabi pages, let's say for Ubu 12X edition. So we've got some variable data surrounding, let's say, the product name. This is static because it applies to all this as well. So for the most part, all but the duration, the demos, and the product name are static data. So these data could be placed into Cassandra, will not change often, and as a consequence, a read consistency level of one would suffice. Maybe a write of quorum just to ensure that these data, let's say subscription terms, and these are key value pairs by the way, so key could be subscription terms, or maybe one big key is the name of the product and the various values, or maybe you have a key value store of generic data associated with products such as products, focus is one column, or in the case of focus, it's a name. So subscription terms, one column, sys requirements, another, user agents, mobile platforms, certificate of complete, completion, which is static, payment methods. So these are all data that do not change and could be stored in Cassandra and could operate at a consistency level of maybe one for reads and maybe quorum for writes, just to ensure that the data are replicated to more than one node. Now, insofar as a syllabus, 
we tend to have static syllabus information per product. It's unique per product. And again, it's a key value situation whereby we could have a key that is named, let's say, the name of the product. Let's say products. Maybe we take the URL and this becomes, but we can't use, of course, dots and hyphens or underscores, that is. But let's say some form of this is the key. And the syllabus becomes the data that doesn't change often. So perhaps we write this at quorum, but read it at one, because we know so long as it exists in Cassandra, it will not change frequently. But for frequently changing data, then you'll need to up your consistency level. Otherwise, you'll experience precisely what we've experienced, which is inconsistency, which is fine because we're studying Cassandra. So if data change infrequently, let's say, i.e., like our websites, syllabi, and other attributes, then in that case, reduce your consistency level. So reduce consistency level on reads possibly writes if it changes infrequently, but if it changes frequently, then certainly increase it because otherwise you will produce inconsistencies even over a longer period of time. So if data change frequently, increase consistency levels on writes and reads just to be sure that you're getting the information that you expect. So back to our features. So we've got quorum, which is really a rep factor divided by two, add one, round it down to the nearest number, and beginning with a rep factor of three, you start to be able to survive across a Cassandra cluster, the failure of one node. And if you up the rep factor, let's say, because now we have a cluster of six, so rep factor is equal to maybe say four, then quorum, at this stage becomes four divided by two, which is two, plus one, which is three, and rounded down, well, that's already there at three, so in the case of this item, you still survive the failure of one node because rep factor four divided by two, plus one, that is, is three, which is equal to three, which means you can survive one, so survives one failure. And if we up it a bit, let's, make rep factor 5, and then quorum is 5 divided by 2, which is 2.5 plus 1, 3.5 rounded down is 3. So now you can actually survive the failure of two nodes, two failure, or the failure of two nodes, that is. And as you up it, and you'll see that you gain advantages at certain numbers. For example, six, they're seemingly odd, by the way. Then it's six divided by two, which is three plus one, four. And this gives us this particular configuration. So two failure. So as you can see here, perhaps a more ideal situation to be able to survive the failure of two nodes is maybe to have a rep factor of five rather than six, because with six at the quorum level, you're wasting resources. So you could be storing other data in that place. And you can just go on and on and just model it out to see with this simple formula, maybe an Excel spreadsheet. And they'll tell you what you can survive for the data sets that are available. So again, as we've mentioned, consistency levels are set by the driver such as PHP, Python, Ruby, Perl, what have you. There's some other things that should be noticed, noted, that is, and that is, for example, and they include, for example, the fact that by default, Cassandra automatically repairs various replicas and other nodes in your cluster. So let's just include as another option that read, or we should say these are inbuilt or built-in repairs. There are a number of them, three of them to be precise, and it's an area that's subject to change like anything, but read repairs and hinted handoffs are the common ones referenced when dealing with Cassandra. What happens with read repairs is that corrections occur as data are read. And basically this is because the coordinator contacts various nodes and compares results. So just to have a quick look at our graphic to see what's ha what happens behind the scenes. Again, this is all theory. So your client, let's say you're on Ubu Desk 1 as we are, let's say this node, or Desk 2, either one, Ubu Desk 2, and you contact Ubu Serve 1. So from this node to this node, 110. So now 110 becomes your broker, your coordinator, if you will. That's the terminology that's used within the Cassandra space. This coordinator needs to then determine, based on the tokenization, the virtual nodes, the auto-tokenization, where your data live, your key space, that is. So your key space may be spread, let's say, 
on sent two and UbuServe three, unbeknownst to you. But UbuServe one will broker the connection and fetch the data from these two nodes accordingly, comparing them to see who has the latest information. And depending on the quorum set for the reads, will determine what information is printed on your screen. The fault consistency level is one, so whatever information comes back first is served to the client, the rows that is, and that's what you'll see. And that's why we're seeing inconsistencies. So as you up the rep factor, then more nodes may be consulted. Rep factor and consistency level will cause more nodes to be consulted. So for example, if your rep factor is two and you're, you're set to quorum for resolution, well, quorum again would be rep factor two divided by two, that's one plus one, two. So two nodes would need to be con consulted, both UbuServes three and sent two, if these are the two nodes holding the key space for web app one. They both would have to consent, and then your coordinator node will compare in memory who has the latest data. Now, if there's a discrepancy, your coordinator node will contact the various other nodes that could potentially house the key space to indicate to them that they should perform a read repair, which is to update their latest copy. So let's say UbuServe 3 has the latest based on timestamps as determined by UbuServe 1. UbuServe 1 will then contact Sent2 and say, read repair, update your data because you're out of date. So this is handled for us, it's inbuilt. So by default, Cassandra does this for us. And then there's also the hinted handoff. And this is used, for example, when nodes are down for a while. And it's more specifically based on a directive in Cassandra YAML called max hint window. In milliseconds, of course, as most of the time related directives are. So if this particular window has exceeded, for example, and your node has been down, when that node or well, within that time, we should say, because outside of it, you'll have to run a repair. Within this time, so let's just note, within this period, one or more nodes will provide relative information or valuable information, which is relative, of course, to what's missing. It's like the differences in the transaction log that's taking place. So for example, they'll provide key information, row information, meaning all the columns, the column family, and also the one or more of these nodes, of these hinted handoff nodes, will know which nodes have been down. So knowledge of downed nodes. So it's a Cassandra mechanism to ensure that other helpers can chip in to help out the down node. So let's say for example, sent two and UbuServe three contain the data for a given key space because rep factors two sent two goes down. UbuServe three is on hold in hinted handoff mode such that within the grace period, and that's usually three hours by the way, UbuServe 3 may contact sent 2 with a hinted handoff to indicate that data are missing. And in fact, if you have a number of instances open and you scroll through, you might see some, here's actually some information regarding, regarding hinted handoff. So you may see if one or more, more nodes are up or down in between some hinted handoff information regarding stale data. So these read repairs, hinted handoffs, as well as anti-entropy, which you can take a look at online, are methods with which Cassandra will be able to fix inconsistencies across the replicas. So it does that for you automatically. And again, let's just note that Cassandra is driven by timestamps associated with rows. And this is why it's critical or column families that you have good time synchronization in place because a given node may be a bit ahead of time and be flagged as the latest information as a consequence and can cause data inconsistency issues. Now consistency may be set at a number of levels, so consistency can be defined at various levels to help drive this model even further, for example, at the individual I.O. level. So I.O. is basically reads and writes. And that means when you query Cassandra via PHP, Python, Perl, Ruby, or any other front end SQL shell, you can determine for reads or writes 
what consistency levels are in play for that particular session. Each session coming, let's say, off your PHP script is a new session with its own rules concerning consistency levels. And each application that taps into the same data may have different requirements. So facilitates, let's say, per application consistency levels because you may use the same data across a number of applications. Think of all the applications provided by Google, Facebook, etc. and having a lot of those apps being based on the same data but with different distributed data requirements making them more tolerable, less tolerable depending on the gravity of the information that's being presented at that particular point. So it can be quite flexible to us. You can also, let's say, govern consistency at the data center level. Maybe some data centers are more important than others. Maybe some data centers should use a level versus another level, etc. And at the cluster level, so whether you run one or more Cassandra clusters and you can associate consistency levels per cluster. So maybe one cluster is less important. Maybe it's for offline OLAP, if you will, analytical processing and uh, level or consistency level of one is just fine for your analysts versus quorum for your applications that are customer facing. So depending on who's using it will determine how you drive it. Now, let's go a little bit more into some specifics of these consistency levels. So you've got read and write consistency levels with overlaps, of course, So read consistency levels. And of course, these are of the replicas, the data that you're replicating to the various nodes. And they include, as we've already mentioned, all. This means all nodes must respond. So if rep factors 2, 2 must respond in order for Cassandra to return the data. Otherwise, it will fail. You've got 1. Obviously means that only one node needs to respond. This is the default, by the way, with SQL Shell. And that means so long as one node, the, the quickest node, insofar as the coordinator is concerned, and the coordinator may be the node that houses the key space or one of the nodes that houses the key space in a rep factor of two. So as long as one responds, no problems. Two, ditto. Three, that might be ideal for some other applications. Then beyond this, you start to get into generic terms such as quorum, which as we've already defined is equal to the rep factor divided by two plus one rounded down to nearest whole, which oftentimes places the quorum at one beneath the replication factor. And then some others that are of interest include local quorum. This restricts the quorum constraints, so restricts to local data center. And this basically means local to the, let's just note, to the coordinator. So local to coordinator. So to coordinator. So if a question is asked of a particular node, so long as there are replicas within that data center, if the level set to local quorum, then other nodes within that data center will participate in the requests for reads. And finally, we've got each quorum. So what this basically ensures is cross data center validation based on quorum. So if your rep factor is two, then that means two nodes from each data center. Let's say you've got three data centers. That means six nodes must respond. So IE rep factor equals two and you have three DCs, then six nodes. And, well, that's quorum, so we have to divide it out. So then rep factor divided by two, that's one, plus one, two. So two across three, then that means six. So six nodes when you really have, let's say, or actually rep factor divided by two, two plus two, and that's actually still the same. So rep factor two doesn't get you any benefit. So six nodes must respond in this model. But if you up it to, let's say, three, so if you had rep factor of three and you've got three DCs, 
then quorum would say 3 divided by 2, 1.5, plus 1, 2.5, round it down, 2, 2 across 3, 6, versus 3 across the 2, so, or 3 across the 3, which would be 9, so of the 9, 6 would need to respond in the case of a rep factor equals, let's say, 3 in that particular case. So those are your read consistency levels. When you use SQL shell, you set it just for 1, it applies to both, because there's a lot of overlap. So write consistency levels. Again, depending on the client, or regardless of the client that you're using, you should have the ability to determine these levels. So insofar as rights, well, of course, rights are dead important because the crux of our inconsistencies are sourced with rights. Otherwise, we'd have no data. So you've got any, which means anyone who responds, hooray, the data are in there somewhere. And of course, that's the least available, the least reliable. All, well, of course, that's the most available, but most underperforming if there are network I.O. issues. And your typical one, two, and three. So, so far you can see overlap. And then quorum. And then the other types of quorum, which are, of course, local and each. So let's bring this off and then just split off the differences. So any, all, notice you don't have any for the read, but you do have one. Any just says anyone, regardless of wherever respond to you. See, there's a lot of overlap. That's why with the SQL shell, you set the levels and it applies to all. So these are your levels. The safe spot is quorum because it does that calculation and ensures that you need to be within some logical amount of replication to ensure that your data will survive the failure of unknown at least and possibly more depending on rep factor that's configured. So some simple tasks. Let's see what our current configuration tells us about the key space and then maybe alter the consistency level and see how it influences the data. So let's check up on current configuration and fix matters to return a consistent set of data. So using SQL shell, of course, so this is going to be because we're not using any front end clients. The front end clients, we'll leave it up to the developers to use. It's all based on this anyway. So let's say from this node, Ubu serve one, we do a Cassandra. SQL shell. This will get us an instance. Now first to check, just run consistency. Do a help consistency. You'll see the options that are available and what you may set. So no need to mem memorize these things. So one is the default and this is why we have consistencies. Now let's use web app one and do a select star from users. Let's see what comes back. So we're seeing three records there. So far three records is looking good. Before now, by now, since we usually elapse time bef between videos, things appear to be consistent. But we can always check, let's say, on a different node, either locally or remotely, if we've got a different window open, say, sent to, for example, if we had a window there, or maybe this window, that's Ubu Serve 1. Or we just use the client, for example, and specify a different node, maybe 192.168.75.120, or 20 two zeros as opposed to 02. See if it'll allow us to connect in this mode. So let's use web app one. Let's show the consistency. And it's one, now let's select star from users. Things could have rectified by now. If it comes back with three records, we'll just say arbitrarily everyone's been updated in between. So right now things are consistent earlier. And remember, Cassandra is promoted as an eventually consistent distributed database. So let's just note at this point, our nodes appear to be consistent because we haven't checked all of them. But earlier, they definitely were not because we're getting, for example, here are some examples, two, one, two, etc. Again, every so often, automatic inbuilt consistency checks take place, which causes Cassandra to become consistent. But if there's ever a question, up your consistency level. So let's go ahead and set the consistency level, let's say, on this node to a higher level, let's say quorum. Now in this case, what's quorum? Well, two divided by two, that's one plus one, two, round it down, it's two, it doesn't need to if, if it's not decimal. So that means two nodes must respond when the query is performed. Now this will increase the time that it takes for the query to execute, but will be more consistent. So we'll more consistently get 
those results back. Now the level that's set persists just for this session. So if we leave and re-enter, it's gone. So let's go ahead and quit. Re-enter, for example, and regardless of the node we connect to, so it could be local, remote, etc. And then re-execute consistency, it's set to one. That is the default. You can set in your startup file consistency to be quorum, and then use that to drive your configuration to ensure that you get a good set of data back. So let's use web app one. Select start from users. This should come back with the three records. So that's really what it is to it. Now, another note we should mention is that if you notice inconsistencies, you should run node to repair. So as it stands, we've already set consistency to quorum and then select star from user. So all looks well because the inbuilt ostensibly consistency tools have run. Let's just note from time to time, it will be necessary to run node tool with the repair option. This will fix consistency issues across your nodes at some performance hit, but will ensure that your data are up to date. So run node tool repair on the various nodes to determine or to resolve any discrepancies that is. And then of course, confirm your results and you can do so with the consistency of one on any of the nodes randomly. So let's just note, then confirm values. Now, as we're logged in, let's go ahead and execute consistency. It's quorum. So writes now would force writes to go to two nodes. How do we know? Well, if we describe, for example, the key space, web app one, it tells us that it's set to a rep factor of two. So as it currently stands, every write will go to two nodes and that will ensure consistency, any sort of write. So select star gives us these values. If we insert, let's say, let's find a copy from our notes and just copy and paste it. So let's look for insert. And there is those that's set implementation. Let's go through and this should give us something that's more apropos. So let's take this block and as long as the columns line up and let's make this perhaps some of the other systems such as Linux CBT sent one and all else looks well. So that gives us a new value. Maybe we'll do for sent two as well. Notice that took a little longer, may not be that detectable, but it does actually take longer than usual because of the quorum value requirement. Now let's go ahead and do a select to see where we are. Consistency is at quorum, so that means two have to be written. Select star from users. This should come back with the new results momentarily. Let's see what we've got. One, two, and three. That's gonna be sense one, two, and three. Now let's pick another node. Maybe from this node we'll quit, or before we do, let's select star from users. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and quit. This time we'll tell it to connect maybe to 121. And we'll just check them maybe sequentially just to be sure the values come back. And then once in, let's go ahead and use web app one and select star. Now consistency is set to one. So let's see what it comes back with by default. And we should see we've got Ubu serves two, three, one, sense one, two, three. So it seems as if the replication is running properly, but if we run it a couple times and see discrepancies, then we know Cassandra is defaulting to giving us the first value it gets back. So let's see what we got in this one. Sense one, two, three, Ubu serves one, two, and three. So, so far so good. So at this stage, consistency one is working. Let's try maybe arbitrarily someone else. 120, maybe 112. And let's do a use web app one, select star from users. What you'll also find is that when you write with a higher level of consistency, you can read with a lower level of consistency because your data, of course, have been populated to more nodes. So this is looking good. We're not getting the discrepancies we saw earlier when we had consistency levels set to one. Maybe we'll include that as well. So usually writes at the quorum level or better will require reads at a lower level 
i.e. maybe one, as is the default. And that's because the data are spread across more nodes. So consistency is set at the driver level in the case of SQL shell or CQL shell. You do so by using the consistency command for any application that you're testing with the intent to go to production. Operate at quorum or better if the data change infrequently, such as our little example of syllabi or data surrounding, metadata surrounding a product, then consistency level one is fine because again, if a node doesn't have the value on file, it'll find out who does and return it within short order. Consider upping your rep factor because rep factor and quorum or rep factor in your consistency level will determine how fault tolerant your system happens to be which will determine how much failure you'll be able to deal with or perhaps sustain without users of your application noticing. So the consistency level concept is rather straightforward. There's some dry theory associated with it, but generally speaking, it isn't tough theory, just stuff you need to pay attention to to be sure that your data set doesn't come back the way ours did with one, two, sometimes three, etc., because of lack of synchronization. That was a case where node tool read on each node would have forced synchronization across all the nodes, and at which point consistency one would have returned the appropriate results. So let's move on.